Hello everyone. So today I would like to argue how Steppen is able to create value from thin air. Let's start with comparing two different sodas or if you want energy drinks. I depicted the ingredients here for two products and you can try to guess the price or more importantly the price difference as we will see later. If there's anyone in the audience who gets this reference about the German TV show, The Price is High, please drop a like and leave the name of the incredible Dutch showmaster in the comments. So here we go. The first product is a no-name energy drink, while the second is Red Bull. And the price difference is almost 50 cents. That must mean some people actually do believe that Red Bull gives you wings. Pretty stupid. Mm. What an original taste. Delicious and refreshing. Honestly, many blinded comparisons have shown that the differences in taste between brand and no brand products are often negligible. And that means the no name product is often close to production cost as they don't spend much on advertising. And you can appreciate that already by the design of the can. So I came up with a simple heuristic for the brand value. First, my definition, your customer is willing to pay the price differences as a mere appreciation of the brand. And if the price difference in a regular supermarket is 50 cents, as we just saw, we just need to multiply that by the cans sold per year. That's roughly 10 billion for Red Bull. And that yields a brand value or a lower threshold for the brand value of 5 billion. And surprisingly, this is close to what I found uh, on Statistica, which lists the brand value of Red Bull at roughly 8 billion. Now let's move on to oil prices. This is a chart of 20 years for oil demand and supply as well as its prices. What you can appreciate here is the fact that the last barrel makes the price. If demand is higher than supply, prices increase. It reverses as during a few weeks after the financial crisis. This is here. The price tank. And if you check the last few years, it just became even more crazy. If you're an oil producer, you have an interest in price stability. Since you cannot control demand, you have to regulate price by adjusting the supply. And this is exactly what OPEC does or did. After the financial crisis, they simply cut supply and surprise, surprise, prices were increasing again. So the um, red, the, the blue and the green curve are supply and uh, demand. And when they cross each other, this will result in a change in the price. And Steppen has also an interest in more or less even prices. And let's see how they do it. We have to look at the tokenomics for Steppen. And the, there are two GMT and GST. And I won't go into the details um, about what the differences are. Uh, you can watch many videos online about that. Um, I will oversimplify here and assume that GMT um, is the uh, token who represents the brand value. And uh, GST is created in such a way that uh, it funnels uh, all the 
value into GMD, GMT. In the end, GMT is also what the team is paid by. And if you remember the title um, of my clip today, it's how to create value from thin air. So what do I mean by thin air? It's the initial investment, and that was 5 million. And in the end, I will basically ask you about the GMT market cap. Okay, here are the parameters that the team can influence. Um, burning uh, basically means to reduce the supply. And um, it can also be used to fine-tune the system. Um, appreciate that shoe minting is a function of GST and GMT. And thus, if you change the ratio of GST to GMT towards GMT, this will increase the price of uh, GMT and lower the price of GST. This is exactly what we saw when the GST price spiked in the beginning of May um, here. The Steppen team just changed the minting GST to GMT ratio uh, and that reduced GST. Uh, I also plotted as a reference um, the chart of Solana, which is the blockchain where Steppen lives on. So there is a high correlation between Sol and GMT. Um, so you have to take this into consideration because it explains much of the volatility. If you subtract that, um, this um, counter action uh, is even more uh, clear. Okay, and now uh, very recently uh, the floor prices dropped, um, as we can see here. Um, this results in a drop of minting and a deflux or outflow of assets. Um, this is indicated here. This is another chart where you can um, see these dynamics. Um, you basically see deposits and withdrawals in Solana and uh, GMT. And uh, this region here, the last few days, where there is more withdrawals than deposits of GMT can also be interpreted as a bearish market for this project, right? Uh, people try to cash out. But overall, I think the project is very healthy. However, in synopsis, I think the project is still very healthy. This is the number of shoes that are minted per month. So May is, we saw about twice as many mints as the day before, as the month before. And this boils down to um, a constant rate of minting per user. So this is the growth um, of uh, users or the cumulative number of users and shoes and the number of shoes per user uh, didn't uh, change basically. Um, this is uh, the lifetime users, active users and new sh shoe minted per day and per week. And I think the important uh, number is here the um, active users, because if you are able to move and earn, I think you will do that on a daily basis. Thus, most of the users uh, that do move and earn probably own much more than um, just one shoe. Um, and all the rest are waiting for an renting option. And this, this brings me to the energy system. The more sneakers, the more energy, and the more you can earn. However, I think the step function is the ingenious part. Think about how the earning can be maximized in a group of people. 
two guys with one shoe each earn twice as much in the group compared to a distribution of two versus zero, where one has two shoes and the other none. Thus, the more equally the shoes are distributed, the higher the group's income. And the other way around, the more inequality is, the higher is the incentive for a renting system. Okay, let's come to an end. What is the fair market cap of Steppen? I just showed you the brand value of the sodas and here I exhibit the sales and brand value of sneakers. And actually I think the same heuristic works. So for example, when I move with these two shoes, I arrive at home at the same time. So I conclude that the quality is somehow comparable. And the price difference, again, is what you are ready to pay for the brand. So Steppen will never sell a single shoe, physical shoe. That's where I, I put in here a zero. And I leave the answer to you. What do you think is the market cap or a fair market cap or a fair brand value of Steppen GMT? The price is high. Leave it in the comments.